if you really believe that then just like let's just call it a day honestly let's just let's just call it a day and let's not have professional chess tournament ever professional tournaments ever again i really do believe that we're all on the same team basically hikaru and i we're trying we just want the best for chess in general Welcome back everybody. For the first time, we're actually going to do a, a react video and it's going to be a react inception because we're going to react to Hikaru's reaction video of uh, Fabiano's interview with Greg Must Reader, a new YouTuber, at least in English language, uh, a podcast interview that you did during, uh, I believe, Uzbekistan at the World Rapid and Blitz. Is that correct, Fabi? Yeah, this was before the event started, which um, explains why some of the things in the interview didn't take into account the results of the World Rapid Blitz Championship, Magnus winning, because it hadn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And this might actually be not the final reaction, because it's possible, we can't say for sure, but it's possible <laughs> Carl will react to us re reacting, to him reacting, to me reacting, to cheating, and we'll see. Absolutely. So, so I have a few timestamps. Um, that I think we want to address, especially you want uh, to address. Uh, Hikaru had some questions, had uh, some remarks as well about the interview. So let's take a look and uh, see what you have to say about it. I could like that. Yeah, I just want to um, to preface by saying that, um, like, we're just trying to, I'm just trying to clarify mm -hmm, mm -hmm. parts because no. I, I think that we're all on the same, we're all on the same team, basically, Hikaru and I. We're trying, we just want the best for chess in general. Um, we both could be wrong about things. We both could be right about things, but just want to clarify because uh, obviously things I say, they're not, oh, I can't always like go into, uh, especially in this interview, I couldn't go into huge detail because he wanted to keep it very light on the cheating because he discussed cheating a lot with, with Jan. And with me, he just wanted to kind of do like five minutes. So I basically just tried to blitz out all my cheating thoughts and I didn't, uh, wasn't able to, let's say, uh, give every detail and clarify every thought. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's get into it. And this is where I'll stop for a second as well. I will say though, if chess players are going to be this 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 paranoid, and you think that like people have implants under their skin or things like this, the the, on, the honest reality is, if you really believe that that's the case, we should all just pack up our bags and go home. And chess should never happen. I mean, professional chess tournament should never happen again. If you really want to believe that people are going to people are going to be doing stuff like implants or otherwise let's just call it a day and um, let's not have any professional chess terms with money anymore i really am going to just going to say that because to me it's very clear that we get to that stage of paranoia where you think people have implants and, and everything like you've been watching too many spy shows or or, or something because that, that's just not that's not reality and if you really believe that then just like let's just call it a day honestly let's just let's just call it a day and let's not have professional chess tournament ever professional tournaments ever again i really do believe that um all right so this is the first timestamp. let's say uh you were talking about you know the tide of turns when uh we're going to have implants under the skin and we're going to be able to basically check the engine uh with that i can add in let's say another perspective let's say just uh you know ray-bans for example they uh, right now have uh, ray-bans with cameras attached to them um, and you basically get to see uh, what you're doing what you're seeing with the glasses i think it's easily implementable that you're going to have at some point ray-bans with camera that's not even going to show um you're not even going to be a, uh, able to know that it's there so these things are definitely possible i don't know how many years we're away from that uh, implants under the skin i think they're already in fact doing that if I'm not mistaken, uh, for payment purposes and uh, things of uh, that nature. So I don't think it's necessarily spy uh, movie stuff. Uh, what's your take on it? Yeah, I think there's a lot to unpack here. So the, the reason why I mentioned even implants is because I just mentioned FIDE measures, which include thermal scanners. And the reason I mentioned those is because I know that that's going to be implemented in the candidates, thermal scanners. And I don't know about the risk that someone will actually do any of this stuff. Probably very low especially at the highest level, probably probably close to zero. Uh, and I don't even know how realistic it is, but I just mentioned that in terms of what FIDE was trying to protect against. Now, I, I don't know the technological side of it. I don't know uh, if implants are a likely thing. I'm pretty sure that smart glasses are not a concern at the moment in the events 
in which they're protected against, which is, for example, Magnus mentioned the uh, Champions Chess Tour. They had a device which would have detected smart glasses, and they were scanning my glasses, Okay. for example. But again, we're talking about chess as a whole, and not all tournaments have measures that could protect against that. So definitely there are some high-tech stuff, we can call it, which would be a concern in, for example, open tournaments, which would be a concern in online tournaments, because, of course, there's a lot of different types of events, and we are talking about all sorts of chess events, not just the candidates where everyone's on high alert and wants to protect against everything, but also Title Twos. Well, Title Twos, we don't even have cameras, but uh, also the Champions Chess Tour events and all the big money online events and the open events where there's usually no measures, especially as you know, American Opens, where you have hundreds of players and basically nothing is really being monitored. And definitely there is a possibility if someone wants to. So then that's where we get into the uh, people have the opportunity. Will they actually take advantage of it? And probably the percentage of people that will take advantage of it are very is very small, but it only takes a few to ruin a tournament. And we have had cases in the past. We know that. So it's not like everyone's fair and we can't totally run on an honor system. Now, in terms of like the high tech stuff, spy stuff, and if we get to that point, chess is done. I don't think we're at that point yet, uh, especially in online chess, uh, in over the board chess. I think online chess has some very serious uh, obstacles to overcome, and I really want uh, the like chess.com and other major websites to overcome those obstacles because I want chess to be clean. And online chess has hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake, and um, and we'll probably get into that a bit later. But there's a lot of money there, mm -hmm. and I'm also one of the players who's playing, and I don't want to be suspected. Uh, so I want there to be no chance that anyone can cheat. I don't want to be suspected, and I don't want to suspect my opponents either. So that's just a little bit about that. But I don't think that chess is done. I mean, this is. Um, certainly not the case we'll just definitely just have to uh adapt to the ever uh increasing possibility that technological advances will cause will allow cheating to be to be implemented more easily uh, so at the moment we're we might always be a step behind because of course technology increases and we first we have to understand what they might do and then protect against it but um when we understand that what they might do we're already a step behind them right so anyway, th those are some of my thoughts about Hikaru's statement here. No, and I definitely think that directionally we should be moving towards an open discussion about cheating because obviously cheating is a, a big problem. And I don't think we can approach it as in, okay, if there is rampant cheating, there's nothing we can do and basically close shop for professional chess. And I guess what he's talking about professional chess uh, online. Um, I guess this is uh, his address, let's say, because over the board it's much more difficult and I guess it's much more complicated to do those things. As you were mentioning, thermal scanners, I would assume those can in fact um, catch uh, chips under, uh, under the skin as well. So that's sure, for over the board. I just want board. to say one thing, that there is precedent. It's not just the, the Feller case, it's not just the Ivanov case, which are famous. It's not just the Nigalidze case. I was going it's to not get just to that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. But there's other cases as well. And some of them are more high tech. It's not just people checking the phone in the bathroom. It's also people who have an ear device and things like that. So the fact that I think Hikaru is being a little bit too uh, cavalier in saying that, uh, like, this is all science fiction. It actually, some of these things have happened. Uh, maybe not like implants. Mm -hmm. But definitely earpieces, which he he doesn't seem to like think is such a huge concern. Well, it ha actually has happened, and mm -hmm. that we know of. Yes. Like uh, it's something has happened that we know of. There might be more cases that we don't know of, but we know that already something has happened in over the board chess, and um, and in online chess, of course, there there have been many cases of cheating that have been caught. So to say that. Um, it's like not really an issue well it already has been proven to be an issue the question is how big of an issue like if you told me chess.com catches a hundred percent of cheaters then i would say it's probably not a big issue uh but i would guess more likely that chess.com captures a percentage of cheaters which is not a hundred percent i don't know what it is maybe it's 70 maybe it's 40 but whatever it is uh i would guess that they don't catch all of them i mean i think that's a pretty safe safe assumption mm -hmm. And so still, we have an issue, right? I mean, there are players who can probably cheat undetected. They might have a system to do so. Anyway, that's that's another point. Yeah. And in fact, you mentioned Feller and Rausis. Uh, he is mentioning this at uh, one point in 
uh, this reaction video and let's take a look at that. These examples, and now it's become this big issue when there have been no examples of people being proven cheating at the top level. Let's so take it a little and, bit. Um, uh, yes, Igor Thrauses. Those were, those were the two, two obvious examples. And now it's become this big issue when there have been no examples of people being proven cheating at the top level. So that's, that's the problem um, uh, of what's, what's going on here. Now, the second part about online as it relates to Title II, and I, I don't know if Fabian is going to get to this. If Fabian was saying this, why is it that when, when you look at Title Tuesday, you have people at the very top who are well, well-known top players who are proven finishing up there every week. Mag, Mag, Magnus is always up there. Maxime is up there. I'm up there. Duda won the last Title Tuesday. Fabiano, I don't know if he's won one recently. I think Aronian won recently. But like, what, what is he saying? Is he saying that someone's cheating in one game in a Title Tuesday? Like, what, what is the rationale for that? That's what I don't understand about, about this, is that if that's what's Fa if th this is what Fabiano is saying, like he's saying someone is cheating in one game, what just to get a ride, just to piss me off or piss Fabiano off or piss Nepo off, and then and then of course they don't even win prize money. Like, is 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 that really is, is that really the world we live in? Because that's just that's just so stupid and insane to even suggest. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's address the first part. He's mentioning, as you also mentioned, uh, Feller and uh, the Rousey's case, but we also know that there's been more cases than that. Um, one in particular, I think it was uh, this case of uh, the alleged cheater, uh, Borislav Ivanov, if you remember uh, this guy. Um, <laughs> I think he was a FIDE master, 2200. He got a few GM norms, or at least he was making GM norm performances. And then at some point he got caught and nobody knew how he's doing it. Um, this is at the inception of the, the anti-cheating measures and things of that nature. And at some point during a tournament in Spain, if I'm not mistaken, he got caught with a device on him and he was given the option of telling them, telling the organizers about the device and continuing the tournament or just allowing the uh, organizers to um, cancel him from the tournament but not tell them about the device he chose the latter um, he chose not to disclose anything about the device so there's been cases where people have been caught with uh, physical devices on them yeah so okay the, the first point um yeah feller is a famous case i just want to explain the case is that uh, it wasn't just the Olympiad, but the Olympiad is the famous example where um, where we know that, uh, that he was cheating. It was also other tournaments for sure. And they had a system which involved multiple people. And basically um, they had someone who would relay the information to another person who would relay the information. Uh, the first person would relay the information over phone text to another person who would relay the information to him via signals. And one important thing to mention is that in some of the games he was cheating, he did actually lose. Mm -hmm. And in the event, it actually might not have looked like cheating because he lost games, he made mistakes, he played in sort of a human manner, you could say, uh, because they they were sort of smart in some ways. They weren't trying to play the computer's first line, which gets you caught because it's a, nobody can do that. Uh, and if you do something like that, and you sort of remain under the radar. They just got caught because they had too many people involved. It was three people, and one of the one of the person's phone text messages got leaked, and it was all. Um, and that person was also in the French Chess Federation, and it all got exposed in a very public way, in a way that they couldn't um, avoid it. But if you don't get exposed like that, like they were actually caught red-handed. If you, if if it had only been the moves and the results, he would have never been caught ever. Because his game did not prove anything, his results did not prove anything. He was a strong grandmaster who became a bit stronger, but he didn't perform at like 2,900 in the Olympiad. He performed like 2,700. He was 2,640. I mean, it wasn't even... It was close. Much. It was close. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is one thing I'm saying. The other thing is, of course, uh, Ivanov is a famous case of a more sophisticated sort of system. He wasn't looking at his phone uh, and he wasn't using a second person, as far as I know. He had some sort of device on him and uh and eventually he was banned and also the guy was like a, a serial sort of thief yes, crook. i mean yes. he, he got, he got arrested he got arrested he got put yeah. in prison for some sort of like fraud or something yeah so okay that's another thing also ivanov was easier because the guy wasn't like very good compared to let's say feller or grandmaster 
Nikolitsa was another case, but the, okay, he was a grandmaster, but he got caught with his phone. And then they took away his grandmaster title. Rouses also got caught with his phone. This is like stupid, stupid cheating. Um, there was one Indian guy who had an accomplice and an earpiece and was caught because the guy basically was, was not a good chess player. And his results were just too good. And he was just playing the first line. So his, his way of cheating was sort of smart, but he was just playing the first line because he didn't understand anything about chess. And he gained, he went from 1900 to 2500 and eventually got banned for like 10 years. But that was an earpiece. Now, imagine if it's not a 1900, but a 2500, and it's not over the board, but it's online, and that 2500 suddenly becomes 2600. And this actually uh, goes into Hikaru's second point, which is, why would someone cheat? Well, I think Hikaru's mistake here is that he's thinking about it from his own perspective, which is that he is one of the best players in the world, and he doesn't have to cheat to get very good results. And... So he's thinking about it like, I have a lot to lose. I have nothing to gain. So of course I'm not going to cheat. And he's put he's portraying that onto everyone else. And the reality, as far as I can tell, and I think I, like I have a, a lot of um, kind of personal uh, data to draw upon in this, is that a lot of people cheat for a lot of different reasons. It's not just to make a million dollars or to become the best player in the world. Some players cheat because they want to make a bit of money but remain under the radar. They boost the results somewhat. They make some money, but they don't make enough money that they're standing out tremendously. That's right. Some players cheat very spontaneously because they don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose, and some players just can't handle it, and they cheat. Everyone who's played on ICC back in the day knows that playing for absolutely nothing, you will encounter some cheaters. Absolutely nothing. Just for like rating points that are completely meaningless, that nobody looks at, no prize money, uh, not even bragging rights usually. Uh, and people still cheat. And this yeah. is not just in chess, but you play any any sort of mobile game, you'll understand that people cheat uh, in whatever small ways they can, because it's just kind of human nature to really want to win and very often to do whatever you can for that. Um, and okay, so when it comes to like people cheating in meaningless chess.com games, obviously this happens. Anyone who's watching this video, if you play on chess.com, you will every once in a while get a message. We caught one of your opponents cheating, your points are refunded and so on. Uh, I promise you, those people, they have no reason to cheat, according to Ikaru, but they still do, for no prize money, for nothing, just because they, they want to win. And uh, that's that's one thing. That's not really a problem. Like, okay, it's it's not for money, not really for big results or anything, but the players who do that in Title Tuesday, they do mess up the tournament, even if they don't win prize money. But they do exist. A lot of players who will are willing to cheat, but they don't win any prize money. And it's not so uncommon. And I don't even think it's so strange. It's just so, a facet of human nature. Yeah. And then there is the even more serious thing, which is players who are already very strong and they boost their results to make the occasional hundred here and there and thousand here and there. And eventually they make like eight grand or something. Let's say. Or more. Or more. Or very they, often more. Again, yes. the, sky, the sky is often the limit. Uh, it really depends on the strength of the player and um, how will, how willing they are to push it. But... But certainly there are players who you might not even notice so much. There are even players who I don't even, I've never even heard their names before, but when I was looking at the list of like small prize money wins, I noticed some players like some 2450 guy who won a few hundred. I'm not saying that that player is, uh, was cheating or just got lucky in a few events here and there either are possible, but certainly there's some money at stake and it's nice to win a few hundred bucks and it'll make people feel good. And there is some incentive there. You can't tell me that there's not. So that's the other point. Yeah. Again, um, let's continue with Hikaru's reaction. Now, a moment where he, in fact, calls you out a little bit. Let's see what he says at around minute 14 at this point. Your piece with a second person. You can't check someone's ears on, on camera. You just won't. I mean, first of all, they're hidden earpieces. You can't see it. And so, uh, what Fabian, so what Fabiano is also saying here very clearly is he's saying that basically this is actually, th this feels like a real shot at... um chess.com because Fabiano has played in the chess champions tour and he knows as well as I do that when you play in the champions chess tour you have to show your ears to the proctors they ask you to show both of your ears you have to put your ear right up to the device so they can see your ears so he's essentially saying then that basically even though we have to even though we have to show our ears that it's complete nonsense and it doesn't work that's what he's saying essentially which is very very serious actually 
Um, and I, w I wonder if chess.com is going to respond to what Fabio is saying because he knows as well as I he knows as well as I do that when we play the Champions Chess Tour, we have to basically show our ears. They literally say show the, show your left ear, show your right ear, show your screen, show your task manager, etc., etc., etc. All right. Okay. So once again, Hikaru is basically saying that uh, you know um, you cannot hide anything in your ears because chess.com or you know during the champion chess tour they ask you to show your ears to the camera it can be a webcam it can be a professional camera uh, i don't know how seriously you have to get how close you have to get to the camera with your ear and basically how deep they can see in your ear maybe you can give us some insights into that okay yeah I, again uh, quite a bit to unpack here so the, the first thing is of course a lot of the earpieces are invisible um so you won't see anything even in person and that's why very often they're using detectors on the ear like Champions Chess Tour. They were like using the nonlinear junction scanner to uh, to go near the ear to see if there's something there. They weren't looking inside. But because... just to clarify, this was in the over the board events. In person, the, the, in this is in the fight. This is for the finals. Yeah. So I have never been asked to show my ears in the Champions Chess Tour event or the Rapid Chess Championship event, which was in 2022. And the Champions Chess Tour was in 2023. Never once. Now, I was asked, and I'm, I don't know if Hikaru is maybe mixing up events, or maybe he just has a different experience. Both are possible. Um, but in the Magnus Tour, I forget exactly what they were called, but they were on Chess 24 before the merger, mm -hmm. played in some events where they asked for that. And the reason they asked for that is because a lot of the players who were involved were concerned that other players were cheating and they wanted uh, to up the measures. And this is one of the measures that they upped, if you want to call it a measure. And this already shows that there was a lot of suspicion among top players against top players because these these Magnus Tour events were all top players. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that any of the players were cheating, but there were suspicions. And this was a, re a direct result of that. But in the Champions Chess Tour events, I never got once asked. Now, I'm not saying that Hikaru is wrong because maybe he was asked or maybe other players were. But personally, I never got asked. Uh, I don't think it actually does anything. And I'll just give another example. Even if you could see an earpiece. Now, what they usually do and this is actually not just for earpieces, but it's generally applicable, is that they ask you to, at least for me, they ask to do a room sweep and to turn on your cameras, to do screen share, to show all parts of the room. Uh, you have a camera behind you. Let's say I have a camera right there. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have this webcam in front of me that shows the back part you can see. Now, after I do that, the tournament doesn't start immediately. I am free to go out and about until the tournament begins. This is in all cases the case. Uh, so of course they can't they can't tell you well now you have 20 minutes until the tournament starts you can't use the bathroom right mm -hmm. so once i show them stuff i can just change things around like imagine if i had to show my ears okay i show my ears i go into the room and i put my earpiece in sure uh that's one thing also besides that i can just change like imagine i showed my room so there's nobody in my room you saw the full room nobody's here okay two minutes later someone comes in are you going to ask me to during the game do a room sweep like, just imagine if my uh, cheating method was to have someone show me moves from, let's say, my side here, which you can't see. You can't see in the front camera. You can't see it in this back camera because that would show uh, my computer screen. You wouldn't see my door, which is here. There's absolutely no way. And that's just, that's bare minimum, zero technology cheating with another person. Now, it might not even be another person. It could be a computer that I hooked up so that it shows my current board with the evaluation and so on. Mm -hmm. And I don't even need the move. I could just have the bar. It like, helps me enormously. And the million other things. Like I don't even want to get into every single thing that could be done. But the fact is that the room sweep and everything, it's better than nothing. The cameras, they're better than nothing. But they don't actually solve against someone who's committed to cheat. Um, but the ear stuff, I just don't remember. Like I, I've never been asked since 2021, the last time I was asked to do an ear, uh, ear thing, besides the over-the-board uh, Champions Chess Tour, online only once, 2021. I forget the name of the it was what it was called maybe meltwater champion or whatever i, I basically you were played. calling it the magnus chester <laughs> yeah magnus chester it was one of the events i lost to jan nepomnishi if anyone wants to look up the event that was the last time that i got asked yeah yeah no I, I i was hearing about it in 2021 and this was basically at the beginning when you know especially in 
money events where elite level players were playing generally there were not as many suspicions but as you know some results started pouring in people started having questions and then obviously um as you just mentioned uh this is when they started asking for uh new fair play measures such as showing what, the one ears. of the reasons why was because in 2020 it sort of exploded which mm -hmm. i don't want to get into the case mm -hmm. again but everyone remembers the protest league from 2020 and yep. that sort of mini explosion and then in 2022 it exploded again and everyone remembers that case because that was the biggest explosion that you could possibly have right it went to court mm -hmm. and there were minor things behind the scenes but it's not an elitist thing i just want to make that clear because a lot of things online are like well this is just a player who thinks that he needs to he has to beat everyone and anyone who outplays him is cheating but it's not the case a lot of the suspicions are about players who are equal or close in rating to um to the top in the world yeah, I mean, and, and Hikaru has me, mentioned this quite a few players. times. Uh, no, Hikaru has mentioned this quite a few times. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, we all know what happened between Vladimir and Hikaru, right? Uh, more recently. So, yeah, but, but I'm not talking about, like, Vladimir and Hikaru, they're two of the best players in history, right? Right. I'm not just talking about... Um, uh, I, I'm not just talking about that. It's like, it's it's across the whole spectrum. Yeah. It's yeah. not just Vladimir and Hikaru. It's not just 2300s. It's pretty much everyone is a suspect. I'm a suspect. Everyone is a suspect uh, and should be treated as a, a suspect. Like not, I mean, we shouldn't be in prison, but we should be treated as someone who could potentially cheat. I, I include myself in that. That's why uh, it's not an elitist thing, uh, but it's just the fact that there's opportunity and there's incentive. That's all you really need to understand that there is a potential problem. Yeah, opportunity and incentive. Let's uh, move on to another important uh, topic and moment in uh, this video of Hikaru. It's around minute 19 and 40 uh, when we start talking about uh, price money in online events. Also someone else, the amount of money which has been stolen I think is not insignificant. This is why I, I can't really name names because it's actually like serious um, yeah. accusations because there are people who have won hundreds of thousands of dollars and I, I'm sure that not all of them are clean. Um, like, like, really sure. This is okay. Surreal. So, who's won hundreds of thousands of dollars? Like, is Fabiano saying what I think he's implying? I mean, seriously, I, I don't think I've even won a hundred. I don't think I've even won a hundred thousand dollars from Title Tuesday. Literally, I've won what? I won forty six. Like, I don't think even I've ever won a hundred thousand. So, like, what is he saying? Like, it, I mean, what is he saying? Like, I mean, I've won the most, and I haven't won a hundred thousand dollars from Title Tuesday. So, what what is he actually saying here? Um. Yeah, th this is very, very strange. I mean, is, is he is he try is he is he trying to imply me? Like, seriously, I have, I haven't even won a hundred thousand. But then, all right, first things first. Are you implying Hikaru? <laughs> no, no, I'm not implying Hikaru. That's the first. Okay, so here's why I said I wanted to clarify. I'm not talking about just Title Tuesday. That's why, because as Hikaru mentioned, uh, in just Title Tuesday, nobody has won hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Hikaru has probably won the most, and it may even be close to 100 grand, but it's all not 100 grand. And I wasn't talking just about Title Tuesday because I'm talking about the whole of online chess, and I'm not just talking about chess.com events. I'm talking about everything. It includes all the chess 24 events that were uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. It also includes sometimes there's some lead chess events with a prize of like 15 grand. These actually do exist. Mm -hmm. They're obviously not as common as the chess.com events. And I understand that people maybe thought I was talking about Title Tuesday. I didn't clarify fully. But that wasn't my intention to only limit it to Title Tuesday. Although, of course, I think that Title Tuesday is where you're going to see uh, the highest risk, just because the measures are pretty low, of cheating. But that doesn't mean that's the only place where people could cheat. And people who have, uh, I, just to talk about people who have won over 100,000. Um, I, I think you actually, you have the top. I, I, I do, rank. yes, I do. I do. Let's you have uh, it like for all chess. Let's move to that, and we can actually all so chess. All, this is all, online. No, this is, this is all online chess. Yes. No, not all chess. I mean, all online chess. Yes. This is so all online chess, I think. This, or this is one, this just chess.com? This total game is from chess.com. Okay. And the the one on the right is overall is from all online. That includes chess24. That's why Magnus um, made 1.3 million. That's why Wesley made 843,000. A lot Got of it. that was from chess24 events. Same with Hikaru. Magnus did not make 1.3 million from chess.com events. That's also from the Magnus tour um, and, and so on. And so you already see, and you can keep going down. I think I counted about 26 players. I may, may be wrong. I think it's at least 26 and maybe more. 
who have made over a hundred thousand dollars includes me by the way uh, so i'm not trying to implicate anyone in particular because uh, obviously i'm in the list uh, I, i'm i guess number five no probably wait number four uh, magnus hikaru wesley are cleared in, uh, th and then levon 421 so i'm number five is that correct i see you as number four i don't know wait, uh, 356 well yeah but you see magnus is 1.3 he ah, i see Jan is 373, yes. Yeah, yeah, but Levon is 421 mm -hmm. over there. And so maybe I'm number six, right? Uh, right after Jan, very close. I'm actually kind of curious. So he made from chess.com Levon 100 and then total 421? Chess 24 events were huge. There was a lot ah, of money there. So this was the chess 24 events. Okay, that makes sense. Majority is chess 24 events. I think for Levon, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All of that besides the... And again, I'm not trying to implicate anyone because I trust Levon... Uh, basically 100%, as close to 100% as you can get. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say 100% for anyone because, um, well, in general, I think that we should always maintain a tiniest bit of uh, of suspicion. But but basically, Levon, I, I don't think that he would ever, ever, ever cheat. And the same with most of uh, of these players, right? Yeah. But uh, but that people have made over 100,000 is undeniable. I, I, if you go down the list, you will count... I think what he meant was 100k from Title Tuesdays, and yeah, I'm glad I didn't that you that. clarified that. I, I, I did not mean that, just to be clear. But I think that we should talk about the prize thing, because it's important. Uh, because I counted among the 26. Some have been banned. Mm -hmm. I'm back. I won't say who, but among these list of prize winners, not all of them have remained unbanned from chess. And... I think from the top 50, it was four. Okay. From the top 50 prize winners, I think four were banned and then came back. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty significant amount, especially from uh, the best players in the world. So uh, that's just one thing. Yeah. That, that's the amount of people who have been caught, banned, and then reinstated. Mm -hmm. Right? And obviously one of those cases got very famous. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, but of course, yeah, most of these players, I'll say, of course, they're totally clean. Um, but there is no doubt that players have made significant money, including myself, from chess.com events. Uh, not just from chess.com. I don't want to single out chess.com. From online chess events. Mm -hmm. Lee Chess also has prize money events. And Lee Chess has their fair play system. I don't have much insight into it. But I would bet that they would also struggle to catch a committed, strong player who is willing to cheat in one of their prize money events. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, one more moment to finish uh, up our reaction video is around minute 30 um, when Hikaru gives his thoughts about what should be done um, with cheaters. Uh, why cheaters don't get exposed by everyone like other sports to sway them? I actually think what should happen is I, th I think this notion of not exposing them is a big mistake. I, I think it should be public. I do believe that actually. I, I do. Oh, wait, the arena just ended. Um, I do think that should be made public. Um, I, 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 but again, it's a problem because, like, if you make it public, you could get sued, I think. That's the thing. Like, you know, if, if you make it public, you could get sued. Because I'm assuming, like, I don't know what exactly chess.com has said, but I think it's something like 99.99%, something like that. Actually, my alarm's going off. Excuse me. My stupid security alarm. One second. <laughs> yeah, and if you get sued, you have to prove it and thus reveal your anti-cheat algorithm. So... Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing is very difficult. Um, scared of lawsuits is ridiculous. You can, you can say that, but, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you have to pay legal fees. Like, it's not, it's, it's not a joke. I mean, you can say that, but it's, it's not a joke. Um, so, basically, he's saying we should unmask uh, cheaters. Chess.com should unmask cheaters. Lee Chess, Fide, uh, whoever catches them should name and shame. What's your thought on that? Yeah, I, I think that we're basically on the same page. I, I've also said this to uh, people in chess.com. And I, I think that they're like, again, with chess.com, they're they're not the enemy. They're doing good work and they want there to be zero cheaters, just like me, just like Hikaru. But, uh, but they're in a difficult position because while I can say things without having the responsibility to actually find a solution, um, and I think it is important at least to talk about it, they actually have to find a solution. And so one solution that I mentioned is that, okay, you increase the risk. So you you still have a diff difficulty finding out who is cheating, but at least 
whoever is cheating, if they get caught, they know that they're ruined. Uh, which I think is also ethically fair because, first of all, they would go into this with their eyes wide open, the cheaters. So they would know that uh, they're stealing money and they also have a risk to get, let's say, permanently banned. And so what I, I would think is a, a fair, pretty fair uh, way of dealing with it is that it's a permanent ban until they return the money that it was proven to be stolen from events that they cheated in. That's one thing. The other thing is to just have a flat ban and a, a public statement that this person was caught or like, let's say a public um, sort of uh, not a trial, but, you know, like some sort of investigation. So we, uh, we determine this player is cheating. Now they can appeal, but it, it becomes public. So it's not like it remains behind closed doors that uh, I, I'm not going to name anyone, but there are players who are active in Title Tuesday making money who have been banned before. Uh, and people don't know who they are. And some, sometimes their name gets like mentioned, but it's not really mentioned very publicly. Yeah, That's one thing. So it could become public. I think that returning the money is also a good step. And having maybe a longer ban yeah. from, from playing on in prize events. So they can play on the website, but they can't continue to make money. Yeah, and I Which, think if you think about it, making money in online chess events is a huge privilege. Just being able to sit at your home, expend a bit of effort, but not much, you know, spend and then make more money than people make uh, in their job in in a month, you know, for example, is a huge privilege. So if you abuse that privilege, I don't think it's unfair at all that that it gets taken away. I mean, it's basically the least that you can do. I mean, it's um, stealing. Yeah, it, 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 it's, stealing. it's literal yeah. stealing. Right, you're stealing money from somebody else's pocket. Um, forget about the privilege. Forget about how, let's say, physically easy it is to do so, and how convenient it is from a job's perspective. But it's just pure stealing. So I mean, we yeah, have stealing, to address it. We have to uh, deal with it as stealing. Um, so I, I think Hikaru definitely makes a good point in uh, this one. Name shame, and I think Chess.com directionally is moving towards um those type of pastures because but right do now have yeah go ahead they do have um as he carved did mention uh, an obstacle which is that yeah they they will be on the line like i can say you should ban them and it's easy for me to say but they're the ones who potentially get taken to court but right now i think uh, every single time that uh you're playing a title tuesday or a money event you're signing new terms of services so uh, these are renewed much more um let's say brutal terms of services um in chess.com's favor like they can do whatever they want at this point well, basically and i, I don't I think, think what you have the, the authorities terms, to sue them what the terms of service say is that uh it would have to be arbitrated and i i don't know all the legal details but i guess it makes it a bit less risky for chess.com but it doesn't mean that they don't that they don't still have to go through a process i mean uh, again, maybe the, maybe the lawyers in our uh, chat can can clarify. But yeah, it's it's not like you can't do anything. It's just that I think it gets arbitrated. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's so. Yeah, I, I think that definitely bigger punishments. Like if you can't ensure that you catch all the cheaters, at least making sure that they uh, take a risk to cheat, it lowers their incentive. That's yeah. the main thing. Right now, their incentive is so high. It's like you you cheat, you make. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, let's say you cheat for half a year, you make five grand, you get caught, nobody knows, you come back later, you can still make money later. And what is the, like, what's the downside? I mean, you weren't going to make a million dollars if you were, let's say, a 2,600 player, but you made five grand. Now you take, you know, a few months break from making money, then you come back and nobody's the wiser. And this is, this has happened. Like, one of the things which, um, Okay, actually, I'll get into one thing. So I, I read some of the Reddit stuff. And a lot of people were asking me, where's your proof? Uh, and first of all, I don't even understand what like what they mean by proof. And I think this is something that video? Hikaru is also mentioning quite a few times. He's like, okay, show me the proof, show me the proof, you know, in uh, response to Kramnik's, Kramnik's allegations and so on and so forth show me the proof okay. but it's impossible to show physical proof it, it, it literally doesn't sure. exist i don't want to get into the kramnik and hikaru thing because i don't think he hikaru cheats so 
Um, but no, yeah, it's, it's, of- it's not about Hikaru. Like he mentions, you know, Kramnik calling out uh, a few other names. Sure, sure. I yeah. think he mentions Jospim at some point. Uh, and sure, so again, and I don't, so I don't want to mention any names because I'm not trying to accuse people. I don't have like a hundred percent certainty if that's what. If people are asking, do you have a hundred percent certainty about someone? I don't have a hundred percent certainty about anyone, but you would also not get a hundred percent certainty about any case. Like people who think uh, that think about some like famous murder case that happened in the '90s. Um, people assume they don't have a hundred percent proof, right? So. Our bar is never a hundred percent. Are, we, the are you talking about OJ? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is when people ask for proof, even okay. if I had like a hundred percent certainty, whatever that would mean to me, what do you expect me to show you? Like, do you expect me to show you someone's bedroom where they're like consulting a computer and I have it all on video camera and they're playing title Tuesday at the same time? Like what, are, what are they expecting? If you're asking about proof that people have cheated, I can tell you that, um, that more than one player who has been over 2700 has been banned now uh they they might say well i don't believe chess.com bans are 100 percent um and i believe that the number is actually like close to five uh but okay whatever um anyway it that that doesn't really matter but players who have been at near the top of the world have been banned cheating so if we assume that that is true that they were cheating then is that proof that people do cheat, that people can cheat? Uh, the other thing is one of the players who was 2,700 and banned did not win money, prize money, in the tournament where he was banned. Uh, and this I, this is a fact. So is that proof? Again, I don't know. Now, if you're asking me to like show you statistical proof, anytime people tr- show some numbers or something, they, it just gets laughed away anyway. So, And obviously, nothing is statistically 100% because... Um, well, you know, I, I've had amazing tournaments that are way above my normal level. I've had a, terrible tournaments that are way below my normal level. Uh, if if I was to win like the next 200 classical games, then you could say, yeah, that's probably proof that he's cheating. But um, in in lieu of that, people don't usually just like decide to win 200 games in a row. Mm-hmm. Uh, then what is proof again? Like if a, if a 1700 plays like a 2700 in an event. Is that proof? I, I don't know. There is a chance. There is a chance, right? And that's what people will say. For example, I lost to a 1900. This is uh, in one title Tuesday. This is a, a one in over 100 uh, event, right? right? Like I'm, I think I'm expected against someone 800 points lower than me, which is 2000, to get 99 out of 100 statistically, maybe even a bit more. I'm not, not 100% sure. But uh, so someone who's 8, 1900, I'm probably going to, to maybe... The score is likely, statistically, likely to be 120 to 1, maybe. I don't know. But it's somewhere in that range. Uh, but this is not proof, obviously, because if I if I said, well, this person beat me, therefore they're cheating, nobody would believe it. Uh, they would say, well, prove it. <laughs> it's like, what do you want me to prove? Yeah. Uh, of course, I can't prove it. And then they'll say, well, there was a mistake at this moment. You were better. I'm like, For example, I, I um, yeah, like sometimes some case goes out and it's like, well, you made a mistake at this moment. And and very often people say, on Reddit especially, they're like, well, if you play at this level, if you play so badly, well, I, even I could beat you. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe the person saying that is 1,400. And they think that because I made one mistake in a game that they suddenly are able to beat me. Uh, so part of it is just like pure Dunning-Kruger, like the people who don't know much about chess, uh, thinking that... Um, that like anyone can beat anyone and anything is possible and the sky's the limit and they can beat someone, which maybe even is their like personal wish that uh, they see that like you, you lost to a player 800 points lower. Well, it gives them some hope for them for themselves. I don't know. Anyway, it's not, not entirely relevant, but the, the question of proof is one which I can't give you any hard proof, but I can say that um, there are people who have uh, cheated, who are continuing to play and perform above their average level, as in their FIDE rating, in online events. Uh, This to me is like a little bit troubling, but again, is it proof? No, I I don't have that whatever, whatever kind of, um, uh, whatever their threshold for evidence is, I don't have it. I don't think anyone does. I think that they basically don't want to believe that, um, or they just want to be argumentative, which is also an option, right? If the engine moves uh, don't fit, you must acquit. 
Now, uh, let us know what you think about this whole discussion in the comments. I think we covered a lot of ground. Hikaru, we're waiting for your response. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know how you think the chess world is going to move on uh, from this uh, plague, uh, from this uh, discussion of cheating. Anyway, until next time. See you guys.